A reading from Isaiah. <clears throat> for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the Lord, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice like the gray. How priceless is your love, O God. All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. from 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, <clears throat> I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, <clears throat> except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts <clears throat> Excuse me, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each of you is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. To another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith <clears throat> by the same Spirit to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Holy 
Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. <clears throat> when the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I would like to invite the children to come up. Good morning. Don't you just love the weather? <laughs> it's, it's fun out there. Can anybody tell me what this is? A toolbox. And we keep tools in a toolbox. Okay, let's look at the tools for a second. Okay. This was uh, put together by Rick Allwert, by the way. And anybody know what this is? Don't your dads mess around with tools? <laughs> no, it has a jagged edge with teeth on it. And it actually saws things. This one, in particular, is called a hacksaw. You can actually saw metal with it. Isn't that something? Boy, I expected you to be more knowledgeable. Anybody know what this is? Oh, wow, it's a brush. Thank you. This is a, a steel brush. If you, t if you touch it, it'll actually go into your finger. Those are steel br bristles. So if you have something that's really dirty and really rusty, you use a steel brush on it. <laughs> well, I guess your dads are a little handy. All right, excuse me, maybe it's your mom's. This is a hammer. You are right. What do you do with a hammer? You bump it. You, you are, um, you push something in, like a, um, you put something in, and it, you can hang a picture on it. Use it to hang pictures. That little something you nail in. Anybody know what that little something is? Emerson. A nail. A nail. It nails nails. All right. Now we see this is for cutting wire. This is pliers. A couple of tin snips in there. Ah, what is this? 
<laughs> so this is for putting nails in. You, you screw screws in with it, right? Screws are different than nails. Okay, so why do we have all these different tools? To build a house? Mm -hmm. Emerson? There you go. Each one does something different, right? This screws screws, this nails nails, this brushes dirt and crud, and this saws things. Everyone, it, yeah. Well, guess what? That's the way God made all of us. Each of us are different. And the Apostle Paul says that the Holy Spirit gave each and every one of us something to do to build up the body of Christ. And we each do something important. Is a hammer more important than a screwdriver? No. A screwdriver... A hammer wouldn't do me any good if I needed to unscrew a screw. If I needed to screw, take a screw out, a hammer wouldn't do me any good. Well, I, I bet you you could try, and there's a lot of screws that just that wouldn't work. But, on the other hand, the screwdriver wouldn't help me one bit to nail a nail. So we have all these different gifts, all these different uses, and we've all been given different uses. Don't you think that works together great? We're all like a big toolbox. We each do our thing to help build up the body of Christ. So what you should be doing is praying to ask God, what gift specifically did you give me to build the body of Christ. Okay? Let's pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, thank you for giving us gifts, for using us to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We, um, Faith and Current Events, we read a, an article about Fred Craddock. Fred Craddock was a uh, professor of homiletics, professor of preaching, and he has been credited with changing the dynamics of preaching in mainline congregations. He, uh, he developed what's called the narrative style of preaching. And rather than explain that, let me begin by just telling a story that Fred Craddock told. He told it about, uh, and, it, and it fits for Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Fred would go home to his small town, Humboldt, Tennessee, western part of Tennessee, and every single Christmas, he went down to the cafe to see his friend Buck. And Buck would always give him a cup of coffee and a piece of chess pie. I had to look it up. It's a, some kind of custard pie that's extremely sweet. 
So one Christmas he goes down to see Bach and he says, uh, Bach sees him and he says, come on, let's go get a cup of coffee. And Craddock says, get a cup of coffee. This is, uh, isn't this a restaurant? And Bach just said, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. And then they get their cup of coffee and Craddock is sitting across the table from Buck and they are talking for a while and then Buck says this. Buck, or Fred, did you see it? Did you see the curtain? Craddock says, yes, Buck, I saw the curtain. I always see the curtain. And the curtain was in Buck's restaurant dividing the front of the restaurant from the back of the restaurant. In the, the front door came the white folk, and around back in the alley to the back entrance came the black folk who sat in the back of the restaurant. So Buck says, Fred, the curtain has got to come down. So Craddock says, bring it down, Buck, bring it down. And Buck says, well, that's easy for you to say. You come into town once a year and you tell me how to run my business. Leave it up then, Craddock said. And in personal agony, Buck says, Fred, I take the curtain down and I lose my customers. I leave the curtain up and I lose my soul. I leave the curtain up and I lose my soul. That really is the whole business in our society of dividing people who, and setting a pecking order of who's better than another. And we've gone a long, long way in our society. But there's still unrest. We haven't gone far enough. Even in, uh, I'll tell a story on Viga. I tried to call her yesterday to ask if I could do this, so I'm doing this without her permission. She told the story back in Illinois in her church. And this was several decades ago. Remember Viga's 100. So Viga, um, they had a traveling choir come. One of the college choirs came. And it's a great concert. The problem is, at the end, of course, all the students go home with parishioners to their homes. The problem was, one, one of the students was black. And it seems that no one wanted to take the black child. Viga expected the pastor to take the child. He wouldn't take the black child. So, of course, Viga says, well, this is silly. I'll take him. She took him home, and, of course, she had a great time with him. She even has stories about the great time she had. I don't know what spiritual gift we could call that in Viga, but there certainly was some wisdom. But it shows how the separation between people. We have gone a long way, but we have not gone far enough. Jesus was about breaking down barriers. Oh, I could tell you things about uh, Fred Craddock and, and, uh, and his life, but let's just talk about this soul business of taking down barriers, taking down the curtain. It is a soul business. Jesus showed us what needed to be done. N.T. Niles says this about Jesus, looks at, at what he taught and what he did, and said this. 
he enlisted Simon the Zealot as a disciple, setting aside political distinction. He dined with Zacchaeus, setting aside class distinction. He conversed with the woman of Samaria, setting aside sex distinction. He responded to the appeal of the Syrophoenician woman, setting aside race distinction. He extolled the faith of the centurion, setting aside national distinction. He befriended sinners, setting aside popular distinction. He allowed the woman who was a sinner to touch him, setting aside reputational distinction. He praised the poor widow who gave her might, setting aside economic distinction. He washed his disciples' feet, setting aside the master-servant distinction. He rebuked his disciples for their intolerance toward that follower who was not of the twelve, setting aside denominational distinction. He enjoyed the company of children, setting aside age, age distinction. Jesus was in the soul business. That soul business was about taking down curtains, barriers between people. The Apostle Paul talks about how now those curtains are still being taken down in the church where everyone is important. Everyone fits into God's toolbox. Everyone has a particular gift to share or maybe even many gifts. I think the list of gifts goes on and on. I think I've told the story before about a farmer in my first congregation. Actually, it was in the second point that started from my uh, first congregation, the second church 18 miles to the north in Lucas, Kansas. And we, pr we started, uh, when we started that congregation, we worshiped in an old EOB church. The EOB, they were now United Methodists, worshiped in the morning, 12 people, and we worshiped in the evening. But at, at, because of evening worship, we had all kinds of visitors from other churches, so we had 120 people worshiping with us in the evening. The only problem is no altar. So we needed to put up an altar that was a portable altar so that we could uh, move it out of the way so the United Methodist people didn't have to deal with it. And um, Melvin comes up to me and he said, he asked me what we were going to do, and I had already purchased a door. We were going to cut it in half, put hinges on it, and put collapsible legs on it. And Melvin says, Pastor, would it be all right for me to do that? Would it be all right if I did that? And I said, Boy, would you, Melvin? That would be great. And Melvin put it together. He, he called me up and asked me to come out to the farm to look at it. He said, will this be all right? And I said, Melvin, it's just fine. You know, it didn't matter how it looked. It was just an old door cut in half with hinges because we put a big tablecloth that went all the way down to the floor. So I was folded up and went off to the side. And when Melvin brought it into the church, he came to me and he said, Pastor Dan, and he had tears coming down his eyes. Thank you for letting me do that. I said, Melvin, you can do anything you want to do. Oh, no, thank you. I've never in all my life ever been able to do something for the church, to actually do something. And I thought, shame on us, shame on the church for not allowing people to use their gifts. When we needed a processional cross, Melvin said, 
Pastor Dan, do you think I can do that? <laughs> he didn't know if he could. And I said, Melvin, I'll draw the picture. You can do it. And he made a very nice oak processional cross. See how it's a soul business? We're all given a gift to use for the building up of the body of Christ. Each and every one of us. There should be a cartoon coming up. Well, by the way, all the people on the face and body of Christ to show that we all make the body of Christ. Try the next one. Mr. Norlander, as your gift assessment placement consultant, I have the task of connecting you with the ministry of the church that you have tested most gifted to perform. After much deliberation, it is my conviction that you would serve the best as a pew sitter. And we laugh. That's a tremendous gift. Faithfulness in worship. Regular worship attendance. People, surrounding people, is a great evangelism tool. It's a great gift. So we have all kinds of gifts, all kinds of things that people need to do if they just were like Melvin and said, hey, can I do that? At a conference, hundreds of people, no one knew each other. And when they came to the time to oh, have one of those uh, warm-up exercises, the leader of the conference simply said, I want you to go around your table, introduce yourself with your name, and then tell them what gift it is you have that you bring to this conference. How would you answer that? I guarantee you, our loving, gracious God has given you a gift. Amen.
together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Giving thanks for God's great gifts, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you gift us with many blessings. You call us to serve each other in your name. Strengthen us for this service. Bless all who serve you in this place and in the world outside these walls. Help us to discover our gifts and use them for all these manifestations of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice and mercy, we confess that we have silenced our prophets. On this day, we honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who prophetically witnessed to your radical, inclusive love. Help us to carry forth your call to justice beyond this Sunday and into our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of light, in your light we see light. Shine on the path for all nations to seek peace, justice, and the well-being of all. We pray for the United States as we continue to seek a solution to the refugee crisis. And as we do that, we hear of bomb attacks in Istanbul and Turkey and in Jakarta, Indonesia. We're thankful for the release of 10 American service members by Iran and that West Africa has been declared Ebola-free. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of healing, grant help, healing, and wholeness to all who are in need of your care. We pray especially for Linda Brashear, Pam Cole, Lucy Dolly, Jeff Dykeman, Ron Fells, Debbie Huff, Ellen Malcolm, Darlene McLaughlin, Noah Miller-Cox, Kylie Timmerberg, and Janet Wall. Are there any others? We give thanks for the faithfully departed who have gone to join the marriage feast that has no end. We remember, <coughs> we remember especially John Burke, Elsie McCall, and Jim Lampy. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting in your love and healing, O God, we commend to you all for whom we pray, knowing you will hear and answer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I would just like to point out the Grief Share class. It started last Monday. Um, you know, grief is something that we all experience at different times in our lives, and we might not think it's acute, and then it comes flushing back quite unexpectedly. Last week, we had a good class for a first class. We had folks there whose grief is very new and very raw, and we had folks there who, um, whose grief is a little bit older, and then we had, I think, the most important thing for all of us is that we all need to be really good about walking the journey grief with others. And we have a lot of opportunities, I think, to do that. So this is an excellent class. You can be as involved as you want to. There's an excellent workbook. There's the bulk of the session. It's really a video that's very, very good. There's time for sharing, and then there's independent work that you can do as much of as you want. So I would just encourage you to come try it. Uh, it is a 13-week session, but um, needless to say, if you miss a session, it's not going to be a big problem. Um, leadership is very good. Um, chaplain from Cox and Oxford Health. So we welcome you to come. Six o'clock, we meet in the choir room. Thank you. Who's next? I brought my little friend Piper here to help me this morning, but just a couple reminders of ways that you can um, offer healing and care to those in need in our community. Next Saturday, and I know Jim's service is going to be right in the middle of this, but we will have a Habitat for Humanity workday from 9 until 4 at the um, Habitat House out in West Springfield. If you'd like to come to Jim's service and then come out and help us in the afternoon, that would be great. We are close to filling our, our volunteer slots, but still have room for a couple more people, so please let uh, Bruce, Callan, and myself know. And then also, uh, I'm doing a diaper drive for the Diaper Bank of the Ozarks. Um, great response, uh, without a lot of publicity, just this week, and we'll be collecting diapers through the 31st of January. The, um, bin for, the collection bin is out there near the ladies' restroom. Thank you. And a couple of things from council. We have our last focus group today between services. So if you haven't participated in one of those, we encourage you to come and share your thoughts about the survey results. And I'm going to present uh, those focus group discussion topic points at the annual meeting. And that's the other announcement is the annual meeting is next week between services in the fellowship hall. And we do need a quorum to vote for budgets. And we have a couple of other uh, exciting things to show you guys at that meeting. So I hope to see you all there. Um, and lastly, is Gretchen Gilbert here this morning? I didn't see her. But no, if you see Gretchen, she is going off council this year, and so we just want to want to say a big thank you to her. She's been a liaison between the Lighthouse and been on that board and brought all of that information back to council, and so she has done an excellent job, and, um, and I want to thank her for her service, and I'm excited about the new year with council. I also will be going off, so next week will be my last uh, thing as president, too, so um, it's been great. Thank you, guys. 
Thank you. I don't think the bulletin says it, but there will be an adult class in the fellowship hall. I don't know if the other adult class is meeting, but everyone's welcome. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, live in love as Christ loved us. Thanks be to God.